So welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Sunny. And in this episode, I'll show you how to build multiple Azure environments using the same Terraform code base. So I've been using Terraform Enterprise probably for about a year and a half now. Um, I don't really use Terraform open source much besides a bit of self-learning and these demo videos. I will do a video in the near future on Terraform Cloud. So stay tuned for that. So I had a unique issue to solve. I basically developed a monitoring pattern in Terraform, which we execute through Terraform Enterprise. However, we have a legacy environment, which we don't use Terraform to manage. So I started looking at Terraform open source. Uh, I basically refactored the code to make it work in a non-Terraform enterprise environment. Um, so I basically decoupled it from remote, sp remote state lookups, uh, workspace variables, any data lookups. Um, and then I realized that all of a sudden my code is now agnostic, which means I can actually refactor that code to deploy across any environment. Um, so then all of a sudden, I now have a unified provisioning um, experience for the whole uh, monitoring pattern itself. So that's when I stumbled into TFRs. Basically, when you develop a Terraform module, so I'll do a video um, in the near future. So basically, when you develop a Terraform module, it's pretty much the same. You have a code base, and then you have a variables which are basically inputs into your code base. Uh, so a tfvars file is something where you can declare actual values for the variables and inject it into your code. I'll do a video uh, in the near future as well on Terraform modules, so stay tuned for that. So if you go look at this uh, little code block that I have here, I pretty much uh, grabbed the single deployment code from my episode four, build an Azure lab with Terraform. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend you go check it out but pretty much I've refactored it to, to now have a variables.tf. But if you look at this top part here, I've, I've still got the code for the main.tf, the output.tf, the providers.tf. I've now created a variables.tf. But if you look here, I've actually got two folders here for dev and prod, and there's a main.tf vars file. So obviously it's not a uh, Terraform file in itself. Um, so when you actually do an init, the init will actually not pick up the file itself. So you actually have to manually inject it um, as you're running an init. So if you look here, this is pretty much visually what it looks like. Uh, so I've got the main.tf, the outputs.tf, the providers.tf, and then the variables file. Um, but then you can see here that it's split into two different environments and I'm injecting these uh, with my code base and it's gonna deploy these environments. So if we go look at the code, so I've got a main.tf here. So this is the code from uh, episode four, and it's basically the single deployment code. So you can see here, I'm still using the random pet generator. Um, but what I'll do is if you create a variables file, so variables.tf and basically declare a variable. Um, and then we'll basically uh, call this asset name. And then the type, uh, the type will be a string. You can add a description, which I'll uh, walk you through later. So just for the sake of it, so variable, and we're gonna add an environment value, and then a type, uh, which is string as well. And then we're gonna add a variable, which is a location. The IntelliSense uh, for uh, Terraform has actually gotten a lot better, by the way. Uh, it didn't use to auto-complete like this, um, which makes learning Terraform a lot easier. Um, so if I created these variables, what I need to do is recreate um, my resource names uh, to basically use those variables. So if we say um, a resource name will be, so we just need to do this, and we'll just call it uh, var.asset name. So locals are just a local uh, expression. Um, so I'm basically form formulating a name from um, text strings, um, variables, and anything else I want to pass in. So then we'll just add a uh, environment. Uh, whoops, so that's var.environment as well. So that's an example. So you've got name.1. So you can see here, if we just strip this now, and we're just going to call this uh, local dot name dot one. So so now my uh, resource group will actually be called uh, that variable input above. So so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. So let me go refactor all of this code, and then we'll come back. Six hours later. Okay. So 
if we have a look at this code here, so what I've gone and done is I've created a variables file. So asset name, environment, location. And you can see I just put a description here. So there's strings as well. And then I've gone and refactored my main.tf. So I've gone and created a, um, let me get out of here for a sec. Just got to lint it. So I've got some uh, locals here. So I've got name underscore one, uh, location ID, an RG name, and a resource name, which is just res underscore name. Uh, the reason why is because I did a demo just before, and uh, there's a 15 character limit on resources. So hopefully this is short enough for resource name. So then I've gone and refactored all my code. So the resource group name will now be local dot RG name, uh, RG underscore name, which will be the asset name, environment, and location. So I've basically gone and refactored all my code. I've added a, I've added tags for anything that I can um, add tags to pretty much, which is gonna add the, the environment variable there. And, and basically I've gone and refactored it all. Now, if we go look at these files, so I've got a, a dev folder and a prod folder. So main.tfvars, so I need to give this another name. Let's just call it emu, because um, I actually just built and destroyed this and I'm gonna have the soft delete issues again. So pretty much I've got an asset name um, an environment and then basically a location you can look at prod so prod is going to be a different region and uh, a prod environment and pretty much what you can do is if I go into the dev folder so you need to run it in a different folder because when you do a terraform in it I have tf as a shortcut and you you can basically inject this file so dash var file equals and we'll just go uh, main.tf vars and then what you need to do is uh, I need to go back a folder to basically point to uh, my code base, which is outside of this folder. So this is the reason why you need to run it in a separate folder because it downloads all the Terraform resources uh, or the providers. What I'll do is I'm just going to run this, which will be uh, an apply. Um, and yeah, it doesn't work. Great. Uh, if we go main.tf, which is line... Uh, 249 so where's 249 so 249 so my name uh, I called this res name I can probably just run a, a terraform validate but um, trying to keep this demo quite short okay so that looks good so let's build that and then we're going to switch over to this side so this is a prod folder now. So if we go run the same command, which is the init, and you'll see that the prod folder now has a Terraform folder because it's basically downloading the um, providers as well, as well as any other um, providers that I'm using. And if I just do an apply, so we'll just wait for this. And if I just do a yes, now if we go to the portal, and if we look at resource groups, you can see here I've got emu dev and I should have resources here. And if you look at say, well, if you look at the RG, you can see the environment is uh, dev. And then if you look at other tags on say the key vault, I've got dev here as well. But if we refresh this, I should have prod. So there's prod. And you can see here, um, hopefully some of these will build um, because I ran to the 15 character limit on the key vault earlier. But you can see here, I've got an environment tag, which is prod, and obviously on the resource group. Um, so, that, so that pretty much shows you how you can basically unify your code base. What are the benefits of this? Obviously, by having the single code base, which means you will have a more unified deployment, so you won't have any code sprawl. So, you know, current problems that, that we experience at the moment at work is dev, test, um, is not aligned to prod so then makes troubleshooting harder deployments harder and everything else so just management is a bit more inefficient if you know um, terraform modules you'd probably ask why wouldn't you just have a, a singular module but then if you think about it you probably need to break up multiple modules for different resources then it gets a bit more complicated but obviously you could do it using uh, modules as well but if you have a simple deployment where you're trying to deploy the same sort of code set across multiple environments. The tfvars file um, is basically a, a very simplified approach. Um, you can you can inject variables. So if we go back to my doco here, so there's there's a really good uh, reference here 
that I link and there's basically, you know, what what is the difference between these variable files? Um, and this, this sort of goes through and explains it because variables are pretty much inputs. Uh, when you define code, you can have variables which will be defined inputs, but then you can have a TF vars which actually declares variables. So as you can see, I declared like the asset name, the environment, which in, injects um, those variables in, into your code where you've populated it. I've also got other links here for all the other inputs if you need them. If some of this is over your head, I, I'd suggest that you go watch episode four, which is uh, how to build um, an Azure lab with Terraform. I've got a link here to the chapter on how to prepare your environment. So if you don't know, I've got scripts as well. Obviously you need a service principle and you need the Azure RM um, module if you're gonna run the script from episode four and you need to install Terraform. So there's a script here which will actually download it for you and set environment paths. Um, so I definitely recommend that you check out episode four. So that's an example of the TFRs file. I just wanted to make this quick video to show you how you can simplify your deployments, keep your code consistent across multiple environments and reduce code sprawl. So I hope this video has helped in some sort of way. Don't forget, like, subscribe and share the video and stay tuned for more videos to come. See ya. Oh.